Okay. It's call LD. Call an LD. Cold call. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, we are we're, me and uh, Lurch are recording a podcast, dude. You're on it. What are you doing? <laughs> You're sitting out with a couple ki- sitting out with a couple kids that were hot boxing a car. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, dude. <laughs> hey, it's legal now. It's legal. What's that? Not when you're not when you're 18. Oh, oh. that's true. And you're hey, parked in a neighborhood you shouldn't be in. Did you? Uh, were you able to uh, get some sleep before work, dude? Yeah, about an hour and a half. Did you? All right. Yeah, I don't sleep real good during the daytime. I'm a I'm a night sleeper. That's what I'm saying, dude. You should have stayed with us. I know. I should have. Yeah. All right. Uh, have fun busting kids, dude. All right. All you right. guys have a good time. All right. Later. Bye. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's uh, cold call Popeye. Cold call and Popeye. Oh. I think these guys are just screening their calls. They don't want to talk to you. Come on, Popeye. Hey, you have a Did you make it home okay? You're on the podcast, by the way. You're live. I'm live. Live on the podcast. Watching UFC is what we're doing right now. Are you? We made it home just fine. Did you? All right. Did you guys uh, go over Blue It or what? Uh, no, we didn't go over blue. We drove around. We went down through, uh, through Vantage and looked at the river with the, with the dam ready to break. Oh yeah, dude. What, uh, dude, I didn't even know what UFC fight's going on. Um, oh, who is the, who's the, who's the main fight coming up? You're just drinking. You're not even watching. You're just drinking beer. You're not even paying attention to the fight. Yeah. Hendricks, Hendricks and Lawler. Who are you picking? Hendricks and Lawler. But yeah, that's great. Who are you picking? Who, who am I picking? Is that you said? Yeah. Baller. Good choice. Yeah. All right. Well, we just wanted to make sure you made it home okay. I know your uh, and it was a little sore earlier. Yeah, I don't think I'm on the podcast if you're using words like that. Well, you can use vagina. Yeah, vagina is a technical term. That's a technical. Oh, you can use that. Oh, okay. You can yeah. say penis. <laughs> perfectly, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine to use words like that on there, then, huh? It, it is. It is. They aren't uh, apparently nasty words. They're not one of the seven... No, it's a technical name for a right piece of anatomy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, because it's, it's biology. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's you, pure biology. That's all it is. You, uh, you, no, and, you yeah, we made it home. It was uh, a whole lot better ride home at sixty degrees rather than when we left at forty degrees. Yeah. Did you guys have to stop and uh, uh, put coats on? No, we uh, we took the sweatshirts off uh, there in Ellensburg when we were all together, and then uh, we rode the rest of the way. Uh, just in our, just in our, just in our normal coats. Didn't have to put all the other gear back on. Nice, sweet yeah, dude. Good ride. Yeah. Good day. It's a good day riding with you guys. Hey, how do we sound on this thing? How do you, it sounds fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got gotcha. you going. Yeah, got you on the podcast. Going through the mixture at some extra stuff I bought, so I was just uh, wanted to test it out, dude. See how it works. Huh? Seems <laughs> to be working pretty well. All right, dude. We'll let you go. You're good people. All right, brothers, you take. All right, you gotta take care. All right, you too. You're good people. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was none other than Popeye. All right, let's try uh, um, Chewy one more time. Well, good. He said we sounded good. Yeah. And see, so he heard you too. Yeah. Cold call to Chewy. Hello? Huh? Hey, Chewy. Hey. Hey, what, what, dude, you're on the, you're on the, we're recording a podcast, me and Lurch, you're, li- you're live. Let me try to move here. All right, Move you're, your TV. You're, are you there? Yeah, you're, you're live on the podcast, bro, me and Lurch are recording a podcast. What are you, what are you doing? I'm live on a podcast, man. Yeah, you're live right now, dude, we're recording you. What? It's breaking up, I can't hardly hear you. Well, that's because you have an Android, dude. <laughs> you're actually cutting out, dude, where are you? I'm going to try to step out here, hold on. Step out of where? There we go. Well, I'm going to step outside so you guys can hear me better. I would stand on the roof with the Android so it gets a signal. You put tinfoil on your head. <laughs> Wear a tinfoil hat. There we go. Outside now, boys. What are you What are you doing? What are you, in a basement somewhere? It puts the lotion in the basket? What's going on? Dude, I am causing hate and discontent down here. That's dude, what I'm doing. well, you need to freaking get that city under control, dude. Seriously, you're <laughs> you're all over the paper. Uh, apparently you guys aren't doing your jobs down there very well. That's what I read anyways. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know what? We're, uh, we're up here podcasting and we're thinking about your brother and, uh, we're going to drink a beer for you. How about that? That's very nice. Here's a shout out for all you guys. Yeah. What, 
Atta boy, that's nice. what we were waiting for. All right, dude, you be safe down there, okay? We'll talk at you. All right, take it easy, guys. Later, All right, bro. Later, bye. L- later. <laughs> he is working. That's awesome, dude. All right, you ready to do this thing? Let's do it. Here's to the goat that took a float upon the Swanee River. He grabbed his bag upon a snag, and boy, did he quiver. Oh, straight from Matty O'Shea. All right, enough of that. Here we go. That is right. Welcome back. All our fellow bikeaholics out there. That's right. You uh, tuned back in. We're glad you're here. This is the podcast for all motorcycle enthusiasts. The motorcycle and majority, the 99%. That's right. The big MM motorcycle majority. Welcome back, guys. Let's get straight into this thing. All right, guys, this is Ryan Erlacher, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your guy with sausage fingers, and your high tech redneck. Attaboy. Uh, and that uh, in the studio with me is the one and only Lurch, and I uh, appreciate you being here, man. I'm glad to be here. You ring. You ring. Oh, boy, dude. I got to get a recording of that. Um, so, he, yeah, here we are. Just going to be us two uh, on this episode. And uh, we have got a ton of stuff going on here. We opened with a little Irish music. And there's a reason for that. I bet there is. Um, which we will get to a little bit later in the episode. Um, because we want to talk a little bit about this and throw it out there. So, I feel a little bit um, like we're moving up in the world, bro. Because... Really? Because why? Well, what am I holding in my hand? Oh, a little blue moon. What am I usually holding in my hand? A PBR. That's right. And so we, uh, we're we stepping it up here. What are you holding? I got a little uh, Yakima Craft Brewing. They're a small uh, craft brewery here in Yakima. Dude, that's a 40. Uh, uh, well, it's a, pint and a, it's a pint and a half, basically. But um, it's a uh, 1982. Is the, it's an amber ale. Dude, that's yeah. really awesome. Dr- drinking drinking pints in the studio it says a pint plus six ounces so that's Matty O'Shea yeah that's a it's not quite a pint and a half but you're getting there how many did you bring in I just one all right uh but that yeah like I say that we we do have a little bit of an Irish theme um have nothing to do with St. Patty's Day because it's long gone um but uh we do have some content that goes oh Oh, look at it. Oh, oh, we got a call back? We got a live call. Hang oh, on. Take it. Uh, Oscar, hang on. Oscar's calling us. Let's take it. Hey, what's up? What's up, dude? Uh, I just wanted to call you, dude. Uh, you're live uh, on the podcast, Lab Podcast. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That, well, um, now, uh, what are you doing, dude? Dude, I'm at an auction. Uh, what kind of auction? That's ridiculous. I'm selling my manhood. I'm selling my manhood. It's going for like... Twenty five thousand. Yeah, twenty five thousand. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Hey, are you bidding right now? Are we interrupting you? Nope, I'm just chilling. Okay, well, it wouldn't matter if we were, anyways. Auction for That's what? It. Are you at the Pheasants Forever Banquet? <laughs> you are at the Pheasants Forever Banquet, aren't you? No, I'm at uh, down in Cottonish. Oh, what? So you're buying cattle? Um, maybe sick ones. Dude, now why were you not riding with us today, dude? That's ridiculous. Because I had important things to do. That's because that's because LD's whoring you out, dude. Yeah, I know, and I didn't even make any money. That's not right. He made money. Yeah, he made a little bit. Yeah, dude, we missed you. I know. I wish I could be there. Um, Popeye and uh, Sarge came down, and we went to Jackson's East, and then we went. I I escorted him back up to Ellensburg, and we went to the Tav. That's what I'm talking about. And you got hoard out, dude. Damn it. You got to do what you're good at. Yeah, well, what are we riding tomorrow? We're riding tomorrow, buddy. I'm okay. in, too. What time? Uh, how about 1 o'clock? All right, 1,300. Where? Sounds, where? Where do you want to meet? 
Mm, somewhere it's warm. Uh, Dude, be a little more specific. Yeah. Oh damn it! I can't. All right. Uh, well, because I'm not that smart. Text us and group, group. Do the do the group me in the morning and let us know. Uh, can you get in my phone and put that in my schedule tomorrow? Already done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet somewhere in Union Gap. It's kind of in the middle. How about the that bucks? Good. How about the bucks? The bucks in the gap. Yeah. Thirteen hundred. I'm there. Green lady. All right. All right, dude. Hey, uh, get back to your auction, dude. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you don't know what I'm talking about. Later, man. All right, later. All right, bye. Bye. That's kind of cool, dude, because when he was calling, we heard a little click in our earphones, and I realized my phone was still hooked up to the mixer, so that was perfect, dude. Just leave that thing on there. I am. Awesome. Um. All right, where were we at, dude? That was a complete interruption. I have no idea. You're talking about Irish music and St. Pat's past, but... We're going to go into, uh, you said there was a reason for the music, tech tip. It is. Let's tech go tip. right into a tech tip. So, oh, tech tip. you know what we're talking about is uh, the beer that we were oh, drinking yes, yes. In, in the episode. So, well, anyways, we are moving up. up a little bit. You did. You brought the Blue Moon, and I appreciate it because I'm used to drinking PBR in here, so I'm uh, living it up tonight. Tech tip of the day. Have you heard of this at all, dude? Uh, <laughs> yes, but I haven't played with it at all. Okay. Well, I just want to throw it out there because it's pretty darn cool. And it is the new Facebook app. And if you guys have not heard of this, I strongly suggest you get it. Um, It's free. Yeah. Okay. Um, Facebook, everybody knows whether you're using Android or whether you're on the iPhone platform, there is the uh, Facebook app, which is made by Facebook, and it is free. Um, and, and everybody's kind of used to that app. Well, Facebook, uh, threw out a new one and it is made by them and it is free. So it's not, you don't have to worry about it. It's not a a third party or anything like that. And they're testing it out. It's free on the app store app store. And the only thing that you, it's called paper paper, simply type in, um, paper. And I don't, in, in the iTunes uh, app store anyways, and I'm certain that Google Play for Android is the same. Um, but you look at it and you'll see that, uh, find the one it, uh, Facebook makes. And it is really awesome, dude. I've been messing with it for about three weeks now. And I will tell you that it, I'm starting to like it much more than the original Facebook app. It's very um, picture-oriented. So at the top, um, you have a whole bunch of, yeah, is so, it say by Facebook? It says paper, yep. stories from Facebook. And it says by Facebook, right? Yes, from yep. Facebook. Yep. That's the one. Hmm. So anyways, um, it has a timeline at the bottom, but it's it, it plays the videos at the top. It's much more uh, animated, I should say. It's not so just blah. Um, you'll see the pictures scrolling across kind of like a slider across the top on yeah. some of the top stories. Um, it still has all your notifications. Um, it really is just a really good looking, um, good looking compared to the other one. So a lot of people don't know about it. They didn't advertise a lot, but it is out. It is free. And again, just type in paper. And, uh, like I say, I pretty much, I have both of them on my phone right now, but paper's really my go-to now. Uh, when I'm checking Facebook, uh, so yeah, w- so, what up? So I can have both of them on there. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're two totally separate apps. I will tell you that they have not released it for iPad yet. So if you, I did download it on my iPad Mini, um, but it uh, it it run runs it in iPhone format. So okay, does that make sense? It's not optimized for the iPad, so you, you can download it, but it's very pixelated on the iPad unless you keep it in the in the very small box and don't make it full screen so it's it's made only for the iphone right now you can download it on your ipad but it's not uh, optimized for that so it looks really crappy pretty much on the ipad mini or uh you know air or whatever you have but it, it is awesome on the iphone i'm so, downloading it as we speak at a boy so i just wanted to throw that at you guys check it out it is free and it is the new paper app um let's oh i want to talk real quick about a new free video release. I've got a lot of them, but I don't want to uh, uh, burn the whole episode on those. But I do want to mention one, and that is the new free video release. Um, of course, Law Abiding Biker Media is throwing it out there for you guys, and it is installing a K&N air charger intake system on a Harley Davidson. And of course, it's free if you go to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash 
Air Charger. Attaboy. All one word. Air Charger. And you can get the free blog, and you can get the free video there. And, of course, you can always go straight to the YouTube channel, Scrappy587. Um, oh, also. Whose bike did you put that on? Was that? Uh, uh, Chewy's. Chewy's bike, yeah. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. We put it on Chewy's. He bought it, and it's a it's a pretty cool looking. It's very re, uh, the price is reasonable for it. And if you guys want to know which one that is, again, it will be uh, as you guys know. In what kind of notes do I do? Copious, copious. Atta boy, you are in large and in charge. Um, so yeah, it'll it'll be in the copious show notes. Uh, links to that particular intake that he got, and it is a very thorough video. And again, free. It's a good looking intake. I, he said he was just going to add one trim piece to kind of dress it up a little bit. But oh, he is. Yeah, there's one trim piece that goes on there and it kind of hides a little bit of the the uh, throttle body and whatnot. The mechanics uh, of it. Okay, I did not yeah. know they made a piece for yeah. that. It's Interesting. A good, looking, good looking deal though. It is. It uh, comes out and straight out, and then it, it's your, it's kind of your basic uh, breather where it comes out and it. Uh, rolls forward and it's the big cone yeah. uh, type of deal. Uh, it's not really a cone. His is a little flatter on the front. But anyways, very cool, guys. Check that out. And I do want to tell you that uh, we also, oh, I know what, yeah, reference uh, the for, for sale video. Um, after you do put that intake on, we have plenty of episodes on that, guys. Um, I'm not. We're not going to hash over that um, on whether, go to, uh, yeah, if you want to know all about changing pipes and and uh intakes and if you need to retune your bike just go to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash efi tuners and that will explain everything but after you put an intake on um we do have um if you want to go to and see our power commander 5 video you can check that out and it's basically how to remap um using a power commander 5 and again just go to that episode that i just said forward slash efi tuners and then if you want to check out the power commander 5 video how to install that it's just lawabidingbiker.com forward slash power commander five. So any uh, thoughts there, Lurch? What do you got going on up in that head of yours? Not a whole lot, to be honest with you. Well. It's fairly empty. Are you full from dinner? Yeah, your wife made some tasty little treats. What do you call mm. those? Tostadas. Tostadas. Nice. Yeah, for the, a little bit about, um, I guess, as we go through with this, uh, as we get further into this podcast, we will reveal certain things um and get to know your law-abiding biker host which we did one of i think right yeah we did one time with you so, and ld i believe yeah i think you're right yeah i think it was favorite toy or something i can't remember childhood toy. childhood toy but anyways my wife is uh born actually she was born here and then uh, when she was an infant she went to mexico that is where she's from and she lived there till she was 16 and then uh, didn't know a bit of english and came back up here to United States and she's been here ever since and and speaks uh, better uh, English than me. Uh, that's not hard to do. No. And she's much more intelligent than me that's and fair, uh, much more mature mm-hmm. and uh, much better looking. But anyways, she cooks authentic yes. Mexican food mm-hmm. from straight from Mexico because uh, again, that's where she grew up. Spent All a, fresh ingredients. Oh, and it's so good. Um, but that's why I have a food blister. <laughs> because um you know i probably because my portion control too but anyways enough I, of that so I did, I did have a second one i went back in and loaded up again you did that and the good. only reason i didn't because we had a big lunch today on our ride oh yeah and i just i was full but uh yeah she made she made makes uh the the refried beans from scratch yep. and she makes tortillas from scratch mexican oh. rice real mexican rice man i'll tell you what and uh not only that oh not only that, dude. She Hola, talks like papi. this. Ben, y escucha otro episodio del lab. Straight up. And she put a little avocado on there, some cheese, and then she used that uh, oh. Mexican cream instead of uh, crema. sour cream. Crema. Crema. Yeah, that was tasty. Yeah, dude. That sour cream is really good. The Mexican sour cream. All right, dude. Um, We have a voicemail that we should go over. This is just one of many. And I will tell you guys that we are going to get start getting to these voicemails and we're going to uh, clean up some of these emails uh, so that uh, we can kind of hopefully get caught up a little bit. But this is, let me see, this is in reference to, oh, the 2014 Street Glide Special Rear Suspension Adjustment Question. 
which I just did a video for. Outstanding. Yes, and it's free, but we'll get to that. And it's already out there, but I, I want to mention it in case you haven't heard about it. But let's listen. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to this voicemail and see what we got going on here. You ready? Here we go. Hi there. Thank you for all of your content and all of the work that you put in. Just purchased my 2014 Street Glide Special in Vivid Black. Was wondering if you could do a YouTube video concerning the rear suspension. I'm a little confused on the single riding and two up riding settings for this bike. Thank you very much. Any help and assistance that you can extend will be greatly appreciated. All right. So, hi there. Oh, Thank I'm you sorry. For- oh, play oh, again. Double play. Double play. Double play. Double play. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, very good question. And that is how we roll. I was really busy with all the the lab stuff that I've been doing really busy with podcasts and videos, but he was not the only one that asked that question. I had quite a few different emails. I had quite a few different, uh, um, some voicemails on it. Um, but mostly emails. And I finally, I actually broke what I was doing and I specifically made this video and I cranked it out, um, to get it out there. So your guys's voicemails, and emails do matter. And like I said, I actually did it and it took me quite a while, but I did it and I did it for free. I didn't even put this one for sale. Some of my videos are for sale. Some are for free. And I made this one free for you guys uh, because it was requested and uh, enough of you left emails and voicemails about it. So I put it out and it is all about the 2014 street glide special rear suspension which we've talked about in past podcasts, you have what in on your bike? I have uh, the air suspension where I had to pump it up and down with a, uh, basically a little bike pump. Yes. Yeah. It's adjustable. Yes, it is. And my 2011 street glide had that, but the 2014 street glide special, let me clear this up because there's a lot of comments on our website too about this. And I was even a little confused at first. Oh yeah. When we first looked at your bike, we didn't see any adjustments. Right. And we, we were confused and even the listening audience was about, okay, does the regular street glide come with, you know, the 2014, right. does it come with air or so anyways, let's clear it up guys. And, uh, basically the 2014 street glide, if you're getting that comes with, um, air suspension, adjustable air suspension, you need a little pump. I don't think it rides as nice cause I've had air suspension. Um, but it's still awesome. It's still awesome. You're not, I mean, I just, because I went from air suspension to this and then the uh, street glide special comes with, uh, uh, the adjustable manual suspension and it, uh, has a knob back there. And that's similar to, uh, the CVO. Yes. Suspensions, right? Because yeah. LD's bike yeah, is similar is what 2012. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. 12 somewhere in there. Yeah. He has a 12. 2012 uh, Street Glide CVO with the 110, and um, his has exactly what my 2014 Street Glide. So it's been out for uh, 2014 Street Glide Special has. It's been out for a little while, um, but mostly they've used the air suspension except for the CVO models. But now standard on the Street Glide Special is that awesome. And I will tell you that uh, I did a full blog on it, um, and I also did the free video. So if you want to read the blog about my uh, opinions between the air suspension and this head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash two zero one four S G S suspension. Well, I'll be buying the special cause I want that rear suspension when I get mine. It makes a I big tell the difference, but getting off my bike and getting on your, okay, you did. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's much tighter. It is. Yeah. And it's just, it even smoother when yeah. it goes over, you know, over bumps and stuff. Yeah. It's really not hard to adjust guys. And, and, I did a thorough blog. I put a table in there, um, exactly the uh, specifications, depending on how much weight and cargo you have. And it's under your left saddlebag. You remove your left saddlebag, or you don't have to remove it all the way. You can just pop the two quarter turn pins inside your saddlebag, and you can just lean Lean it out. Right, yeah, exactly. Lean Lean it out towards your leg, rest it against your knee. You can reach up to that dial, and it even has audible uh, indications clicks every half turn is a, every click is a half turn so that you don't even have to really look at it. So if you're adding 10 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever it is, you can go up there and based on the guide I give you, which is straight out of the Harley manual, I just redid it in a table format. So it's really neat. And I put it on a, a web page so you can get it at any time. You I don't saw have to, it. looks good. Oh, did you see it? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's because I belong to the uh, law abiding biker email club. 
Oh, man, dude, you are getting this stuff down, dude. I'm telling you what. That's uh, that's awesome, speaking of that. And it's true, because you are on it. And I, yeah, so I sent it right to you. And there was a link on there, I believe, if I remember right. And you could just hit it and go straight to the video, yep, straight yep, to the blog. Yep, yep. Free. I haven't even sent one since, so I don't spam people. Right. And that's a cool thing about the uh, uh, Law Abiding Biker email club. It's free. It does cost me to keep this email I have to pay a service. I mean, I do all the emails, but you have to pay a service to make HTML emails. And you know what I mean by that? They look like a web page. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can't just send that across uh, Mac mail or outlook. You have to uh, uh, have a special service and it keeps track of, of my uh, email list and, and all my subscribers. And then if people want to unsubscribe, of course you always have that option. Um, there's no pressure um, at all if you don't like it. But like I say, I only send stuff out once in a while yep. and I've explained it in past episodes, but get signed up at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash email club. It's free. It takes like 30 seconds to sign up and uh, you are the first to get everything. You're the first to get the videos when they come out free. Cause I don't even do them on Facebook for like a week, two weeks later. And when I get around to it, everybody, I put the email out right away and you're also privy to special coupon codes and discounts for the for sale videos. If you want to buy those, if not, just delete the email, but there's no hassle. I'm not going to spam you. I'm never going to sell it. So there you go. I'm glad Lurch bought that up. So again, go to uh, forward slash 2014 SGS, which stands for Street Glide Special Suspension. All one word. And that will take you to that awesome blog. And it's getting a lot of hits. And people I've got, I thank you all. I'm not going to read all those emails, but every, I did get a lot of thanks for putting that out on the email list. A bunch of people responded back and uh, said, thank you so much for taking the time to do that free video and free tutorial and writing the blog and putting the, the table up there for us. So to all you that thanked me, thank you back and uh, for your feedback. I really appreciate it and I'm glad you like it and it'll be out there free for you guys. Uh, I'm not going to take it down. So, all right. Anything else about that dude that I forgot that you think is important? I mean, we're not going to talk. We've talked in the past about different suspensions. Oh, we're going to do a video on your bike. What are we going to do? What we're Yeah, we're going to show how to adjust uh, the the regular the air suspension. Very good. Cuz I have show the table on there and show how to do it properly. Perfect. Don't use an air compressor. Yes, right now don't use an air compressor. And we've <laughs> talked about explode them. Yes. And we have talked about that on a past episode, yeah, I believe, we just but need, you I like need to, get to throw it and do it back out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, we talked about it a little bit, but we haven't done a video on it. Yeah, maybe we can rip that out tomorrow. Bring yeah. the camera with Oh, you. good idea, because we're yeah. riding. Oh, yeah, good we're idea. Tomorrow. I had it today. Yeah. I had, a, In fact, I had all my gear in my saddlebag. I've got my uh, Gorilla Pod, and I've got... Yeah, it's uh, all that stuff. Yeah, I've got a bunch of little stuff for um, taking different videos. But we will be putting that out, guys, so I'm glad uh, you reminded me of that. We will be putting out a video. We'll do it for free. Yeah. Um, and it will be just like the this one, but it'll be all about the air suspension. We'll show you... All, we'll make a table of how much weight and how much air pressure you should have in there. There are some, it's, it's a little, t a little more time consuming Yeah, to do the air suspension. Um, and you have to have the little pump. I bought an old bike pump. Yeah. You don't have to have the Harley pump, I, but the it's Harley nice. nice. It, it, it's set up for it. Yeah. It works really well. And I think other companies make them too. And it doesn't leak any air when you screw it on, screw it off. And True. That's a big part of it. So we're, yeah, just, uh, we're not going to get into that a whole bunch, but look forward to that video. Yeah. We'll throw it out and it'll be exactly like this video, except it'll be all about the air suspension to, uh, take any myths or concerns. Um, and there is a specific way you need to, to do that. Uh, so yeah, look forward to that video. And of course I'll announce it first. Where? At lawabidingbiker.com. No, yeah, but through the email. There you go. You'll get it first. So if you through want, the email club. if you want to be first to get that and, and be notified when it comes out, well then hit us up and get signed up. All right, we have got, uh, what am I looking at? Oh, last, I want to tell you guys, this is exciting. Um, is Do you want to announce this, dude? Because you did it today. You did it to your wife's N. I did it to my wife. This could be getting yeah. really bad. Um, I, I packed her chaps. Oh, dude. I uh, Yeah, I'm not going to tell you, dude, uh, what I did. But go ahead. Tell, tell us about this. I uh, played with the old uh, biker chap, or the, the chaps uh, roll, the, what do we call it, the, the chap pack. Where yes. you can roll your chaps up in a nice little uh, leather burrito, as I like to call it. And it's pretty simple. You've put out a video on how to do it. Um, I remember seeing a video online of a gal doing it. It was she... not my idea. I want to throw that out there right, right in there. I just wanted to make a better video. Yeah, and that's what I was getting to is the, the, the gal that did it. I saw it online, and the gal that did it, it did it so quick, and it was kind of hard to follow. And 
and I she looked, did it on a nice carpet right, floor and yeah. it was the the video camera was in front so it was kind of confusing yeah and I, I looked at it and thought yeah that's nice i'm not gonna do it whatever but then i watched the video that you did and it was really simple so i i wrapped mine up and i wrapped my wife's up and actually threw them in the top of our uh, closet instead of hanging in our in our spare closet so it's, it not only makes space in your saddlebag but it makes space in your closet true and it gets you uh to take them along with you yeah, it's easy. It's really easy. The, so the, the video you put together made it very easy. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, because uh, if it wasn't, I would redo it. No, <laughs> I the, would. The, the the other one that I watched with the gal doing it, it was too fast and it's just too much. And I watched it and I didn't want to take that much energy to do it. And then there's another guy that did one too, but he does it on his oh. kitchen table. He actually emailed me, and he goes, um, <laughs> he has a YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, was, he emailed me and uh, good bad. No, it was good. Oh, okay. And uh, he goes, hey. Uh, Hey, bro. It was actually on Google Plus. Sorry, it wasn't even an email. He follows, or I think we're in circles on Google Plus. But um, he says, hey, saw your video. He goes, good idea doing it on your bike. So he was actually very, uh, um, uh, the timer didn't get started, did no, it? No, it didn't. No, that's right. <laughs> I'll, I'll look at the the other one here. Um, But he was, uh, he was very, uh, very nice. And he had made it. And he said, Hey, like I say, he said, good idea on doing it on your bike. And that's what I mean by this video, guys. The reason I redid it real life, real world, real life, real world. We're bikers. We aren't doing it on tables. We aren't doing it on carpet. We're doing it laid over our bike while we're on the road, dirt, rain, mud. We're, we're draping those things over. And what Matt's talking about, if you guys don't know what the chat pack is, basically you really need to check this video out. It's free completely free i made it for free i wanted you guys to know this i just wanted to pass it on because it's uh really awesome and, and i'm using it now and our whole club is but basically it's a way that you can tightly roll slash fold your chaps up and your leather chaps and it really doesn't matter what kind or what brand um, they all have the snaps on the outside and you roll it up in this very specific way it makes it very compact very uh neat and it actually, you utilize the snaps that are on the bottom of the shaps to snap it to itself. Chaps. Just, did I say shaps again? You did. <laughs> dude, I can't help it. I don't know what it is, dude. I'm glad you caught me because I had no clue. We've talked about this. What do you put on your lips uh, when your lips are dry? Chapstick. Chapstick. Yes. Okay, chapstick. All right, good. <laughs> I'm glad you caught me. But it basically, you're able to snap your chaps together using the snaps that are on there. And it keeps in this tight little roll. And I don't, I've, over the years, I'm going to be honest, dude, I've tried to, to, to make a system, um, but I never really, it, but it, they're, they're, this makes them like half the size that yeah, you can I've fold rolled, them. I've rolled mine. I always roll them and throw them in my saddlebag. And you can roll them up pretty tight, but the problem is, is they they come undone or if you have to move them, they fall right. apart. This way, because you're using the, the uh, snaps, it's in a tight little package. You can pull it out, throw it out of your way. Get something at the bottom of your, your saddlebag if you need to, and then stuff it back in. And you said tight little package. <laughs> Sorry. Just saying. <laughs> Tight, Go ahead. Tighter than two titties and a push-up, bro. <laughs> oh, no. We're definitely done. All right. Sorry, I cut you off. Go go with what you were saying. It, it's just convenient, too, because it's all buttoned together, and it stays tight, so you can just move it out of your way. or you Yep. Know, it, it, and when you reach in, you know, oftentimes when you reach in in your saddlebags to grab stuff on a trip, you know, we're in and out of those things at every stop, and – you have to freaking take your chaps out. And a lot of times you pull your chaps out and your they sunglasses fall come falling out yeah. and you, you yank all kinds of other crap out of your bag. Yeah. I, I was skeptic at first. I was I'm, too, until yeah, I tried it. I know. Once you try it, you're, I'm a true believer now. Yep. And that's once I tried it and figured it out the way it should be done on a motorcycle and at, for, from a true biker perspective, I was like, yeah, I can do this. And um, and then I said, I'm going to make a video on it. I'm by waiting for golly. to figure out how to do a jacket pack. Then we'll really be set. I had that problem today. That is so funny that you bring yeah. that up because I've got my uh, uh, illumination jacket, my Harley Davidson, which I've done. I'm not going to get into that. You guys listen to past episodes on that blog and stuff. But, uh, um, and, and yeah, dude, it's bulky. And I rolled that thing as tight as I can. And so if anybody has a good way where you can zip it to itself or something, that would be awesome to send in because yeah. I'll make a video about it for you um, if you just show me how and get it out to the, the biker community, which is what we do here. So um, if you want to get this chat pack video, and I actually wrote like a probably, oh, believe it or not, like a 2000 word blog on it, explaining it and uh, kind of what the benefits are and what whatnot um but if you want to get it and you want to read the blog and you want to see the free video lawbindingbiker.com forward slash chap 
pack. pack. Yep. I watched it once and I was able to do it. It's yep. simple. You made it very simple. Good, good. So yeah, guys, check that out again, forward slash chap pack, all one word. And uh, you'll be able to see that and read the blog and hopefully it will help you. And please pass that YouTube video around. It's free. And I put it on, I also uploaded it to our Facebook page. And so it got around that way. Um, but yeah, guys, send that to your friends because it's really cool. And uh, I think, I don't think there's a biker out there that wears chaps that won't say, finally, that's awesome. So again, I don't take credit for it. I just take credit for the video I made. Um, it was not my idea. I just wanted to take it to the next level. You just did it our style. I did it biker style, our style, exactly. And uh, did it like the rest of our videos, which hopefully are uh, the reason uh, hopefully they're so popular is that people we, we bring it down to a level that's easy to understand you know what i mean instead of being confusing or skipping over stuff step by step yes without without skipping any steps. A boy <laughs> pointing a finger at you. that's for you, your greasy little sausage finger at that's me. that's for ld dude oh. <laughs> that's for ld because he's always like did you skip any steps <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it, dude. LD, uh, he's, uh, yeah. Did you skip any steps on that video? I go, no, I didn't. <laughs> he's just working tonight, ruining kids' fun. Yep, I know. What's ridiculous? Just let him have fun, <laughs> smoking a little reefer. Jeez, Louise. All right, um, we got an email here, and this is kind of goes in with, uh, I guess, kind of the theme as we began this episode, and that is our little bit of Irish theme, dude. This is really cool just makes me want to get up and i don't even know how to do you know how to dance irish you don't know how to do the jig i can't angela can do the jig but i can't i know how to sit at a bar stool and heft a pint from the bar to my lips and back do you want to take care of this email that we're talking about here dude i gotta find it um boom okay it's pretty short actually it is but it but then if you see the picture of the map and stuff dude you can get a link to that so Let's throw I it will, out there. I will read the uh, the email. Hey Ryan, this is Ireland's version of Route. 66. Who is this? Who's oh, this? Sorry, man. See, I'm like a brand new guy. You here. are, dude. If I was virgin. saying his name, like you would say his name, I'd say this is from John O'Keefe. <laughs> hey, last couple podcasts, I said O'Keefe. Here's an email from John O'Keefe uh, from over the pond there in Ireland. It says, Hey Ryan, this is Ireland's version of Route 66. It would be great if you could give it a mention at some stage on your podcast. It is 1,820 miles of twisty roads, Irish bars, got me there, oh. restaurants, hotels, and breathtaking views of Ireland's west coast. Sweet, dude. Um, so I'm looking at this map. He sent us a map, and he, he actually wanted me to throw this out. He did. Does that say it in the email? I'm pulling oh. it up as we speak. I took that out, actually. But um, here's to you, John O'Keefe, uh, who has been a big supporter of the show, who has donated um, oh, several times. Good time. Yeah. So on this episode guys again copious show notes and if you guys ever want to get the show notes or anything we talk about again i've said it in the past but i know we have new listeners because of uh um the down- amount of downloads we're getting and they keep uh steadily going up so i always want to mention that lawabidingbiker.com forward slash and just the episode number so if it's episode 26 or whatever it's just forward slash 26 and you can listen to it there you can get the show notes and i'm going to put this in there for uh, our loyal listener and friend and fellow bikeaholic john o'keefe and that is it's a map of mm. and it's what it's called wild atlantic way yeah and this is just a awesome uh, dude i and i sent this to ld and i sent it to you guys i'm ready to fly into belfast and take tell that me all about the way around to cork oh dude fly yeah. into belfast yep i'll tell you what dude you gotta watch out for the king's <laughs> yeah, the, that, sun, the sun, the 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 kings are up there in Belfast, dude. I'm kind of scared to go to Belfast. I'm not going to lie to you, dude. Yeah, probably everybody in Belfast wants to kill us because of our terrible trials at at the accent, dude. Oh yeah, <laughs> slaughter them <laughs> every, every time jo- I try jo- to do it. It ends up with a I know, Scottish dude. accent, just like mine. Uh, yeah, the king. I sometimes I nail it. I probably no, you never. never no, you're right. I gotta be honest with you. You never have. <laughs> what a jerk. Here's what you said, like. What do you, what do you uh, dude, You're going to do it, you're going to like it. Yeah, exactly. That's you're going to you do it, you're like. going to like it. You're going to do it, you're going to like the it. The king said so. Yeah. I, it's uh, it's terrible. But we're trying to sound like um, um, little um, those guys at the end of the pot of gold. Uh, the, the, yeah. 
Um, I know what you're talking about, dude. Uh, leprechauns. Leprechauns, yeah. yeah. So anyways, um, this is called, and it's a map of Ireland that, that oh. John O'Keefe sent, and it is called Wild Atlantic Way. And it is, is would that be, yeah, well, it would. It would be their West Coast, right? Well, yeah, man, I don't know. Well, come on. We're not. Yes, it is the West Coast. Thank okay. you. I had to look at the map for a second. Yeah. That's the West Coast. So starting in Belfast, up and around the Northern Horn, around the West Coast, then back down. Look at, the, look at the twisties wow, on that thing, dude. Twisty. And then you end up just south of Cork. And there's another airport in Cork. So you could, I, well, I don't know if you had to return the bike, but you could rent a bike from Belfast. I don't. Go all the way can around. you rent bikes in Ireland? I don't know. John. I'm sure there's some dude. I know you're out there. John, send us an email on that. Can you rent bikes from Hardy Davidson there? Go ahead. I'd like to know. Or anybody else just, listen from Ireland. If it comes down to it, any bike I can get my hands on. Just so I got a bike. Right. Preferably hard, Harley Davidson, but it doesn't have to be. No. Yeah, just a bike. Um, yeah. Well, Dublin would be cool. Why don't we just go oh. all the way around the island? Would that not be fun, dude? Start in Dublin and just do a circle. And here's when I sent this out to you guys. I just forwarded it because I was like, dude, this is really cool. And LD responded on the email right away. He's like, okay, yeah, let's get plane let's tickets and rent a bike. And I go... I don't even know if you can rent a bike, but that would be very interesting if we could get an email from some of our uh, Ireland listeners. If there's a, uh, you know, if that's even a possibility, because someday that yeah. would be awesome, We're dude. Have to start a chapter over there just so we can go. There you go. The, the east coast of uh, Ireland's not quite as exciting, but you look at the west coast. And, I oh know. my goodness, it's just twisties after twisties. You're right. Looking forth. at it, it's pretty desolate on the east. I mean, from from this map that he sent us. So I'm, I'm well, Dublin's right there. In the oh, middle, so oh, I, mean, I see. It's a major city there, but. Right. But the West Coast is much more jagged. If you were to follow the, like our 101, you know, our Highway 101. Right, on our West Coast, yeah. Yeah, that kind of deal. But it is just back and forth. That looks awesome. It is. And uh, I don't even know. What it, have. it doesn't have the exact. Oh, he put it in the email. It, it's like 1,820 miles. Wow, that's quite a ride. dude. It, it, it's funny on a map. It's you know, one it, way. Right. It's not, a, you know, to scale. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's quite a ride. Well, Dublin, obviously, or Belfast, obviously, a major city, and then Cork is another major city. So maybe we can rent bikes in one town, and maybe we can get lucky and leave them in the other. Matt O'Shea. Matty O'Shea. Matty O'Shea needs to get, we need to go to Ireland. Dude, that, if you guys didn't know, that is Lurch. Uh, obviously, his first name is Matt, but uh, that that's his, when he um, uh, gets uh, a few beers in him, he uh, we call him Matty O'Shea. Usually a few Jamesons. Oh, yeah, a few Jamesons. With some red that's breast, right. bush mills. So we are going to put that map um, because we had a loyal listener request that. I not only uh, put it out on the podcast here. If you guys do go to Ireland or you're interested, um, check it out. Check out the show notes. I'm going to put the map right in there for you. And you can check out kind of what we're talking about here. So, oh, why we ride goes global. About time. Yep. So um, you guys heard uh, I did an interview back in what episode was that, bro? I do not know. Mm. Do you? Uh, not off the top of my head. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, episode 27. I interviewed um, the producer director of uh, the Why We Ride motorcycle film, Independent. And uh, I guess that's what you would call it because they had no major sponsors. But it's an awesome movie. And it was in theaters, um, select theaters. And then it came out on DVD. I got the DVD for Christmas because no theaters around here uh in this particular n- close area. And being the brother that you are, you're going to let me borrow it. I'm going to take oh, it home tonight. Remind me. I will remind I got you. it in the drawer. Which drawer? Uh, the special drawer? How much the secret is, drawer? The secret drawer. <laughs> yeah, just be careful what you grab in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll glove up before I go yeah. in there. You uh, well may want to do that, dude. Um, episode 27, yep, um, yep. Uh, Brian Carroll. So if you guys want to go back to lawabidingbacker.com forward slash two seven. You'll be able to hear that interview or just go to 27 on iTunes or whatever, Stitcher. But Stitcher Radio. Stitcher Radio. So what is even cooler, which recently uh, it was you know out on DVD. Now it is on iTunes. Yes. So you can buy it directly from iTunes or I, actually I didn't look if you can rent it, but you can at least buy it. Through Amazon? Through Amazon also. Yep. So Amazon Store and iTunes. So if you guys have not seen Why We Ride, a number one, Brian Carroll is a hell of a guy. And I am friends with him on Facebook. And uh, he's just a real good down-to-earth family man. Um, and he's a motorcycle enthusiast. Um, and, and so support his, I, I just say support his film. Um, and it, It's awesome. Um, it, it's a really fun film to watch. So I'm looking forward to it. There you go. 
um, and I will get it to you tonight. So I just wanted to mention that. Here is an email we got. Do you? Uh, oh, this is this is Todd um, uh, from Western Washington State. Uh, you know what? Do you? Up, backing up. Look for it. Yeah, it's a uh, big email. It is an email, and I'm going to sum it up. Do but, that. But basically, um, it's okay, I, and I appreciate the long emails. It's yeah, for, look, the, for sure. For the listening audience, I'm going to sum it up. Uh-huh. So Todd from Western Washington, um, he appreciates the work that we do here, and, and thank you, Todd. Uh, he says, by far, one of the best motorcycling podcasts out there. Wow. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate that. He says, guys, I am a fellow Ellie biker. Um, he's with a large nondescript uh, department over on the west side near Seattle, Washington. So he's just west of the mountains from us here in eastern Washington. Uh, he says, I've been hammering through your podcast, and uh, he really likes digs the information. Um, let's see, he goes on, uh, not necessarily, which I pre- this is constructive stuff, and I love it, uh, even though it's not uh, necessarily applies to me, but he still likes it. Um, also, ride with a he rides with a dedicated group of guys. Um Although he says it's in his email here, he says it's it's a different setup um, than a classic MC or LEMC. He says they're apparently they're less structured. They well, don't necessarily sounds like more of a writing club. Maybe yeah, writing group, right? Writing club, I would say. Yeah, I would say writing club. Maybe um, they're less structured. Um, they don't require LE credentials. Although he says the majority are. Um, and are open to, oh, they're, so they take all makes of bikes. Um, we do, oh, they have three founding fathers, and they basically, those three founding fathers, uh, they have veto power over anything contradictory to the benefit of that group as a whole. So that's different, yep. and I like that. Uh, I like hearing different things. Um, so that that's kind of how they roll in that that. It's a little bit different than what I've heard before. And so they probably were the founding, you know, or they are. Yeah, he's one of the founding guys. Gotcha. And so they're like, we'll bring in, but we're going to retain the the power to to veto and and, and take care of business. So um, he was curious that if we would do it, and he sent this quite a while ago, and I'm sorry, Todd, we've just been so busy. Uh, uh, we're finally getting around to it. But he, he was very curious about us doing a podcast or a portion on group ride dynamics. And specifically, he's curious uh, as to our clubs, which is obviously you guys all know we're part of the sworn few law enforcement motorcycle club. He wants to know, do we take on riding positions uh, on our rides and uh, generally serve? Oh, he generally serves as a road captain, uh, considers himself one of the stronger riders, which we will get in. Uh, if you make a mental note of that, I don't yep. have my notepad. Mental um, note, check. All right, strong writers. I, I put a pin in it. Yeah, whatever, dude. Come back to that later. Um, so he he uh, he considers himself one of the strong writers uh, and navigation. Um, oh, and navigators. I apologize. He also says uh, we they put their strong writer uh, in the middle, and they put one at the rear to provide some what they called necessary encouragement <laughs> pick it up boys i like that todd uh very uh politically uh correct way to put that uh so necessary encouragement and uh those who are oh what what does he go on to say here necessary encouragement to those who are sandbagging okay and we all know what that is um they like to write aggressively not like a holes he says uh and they like riding tight which i like that because we agree with that here at our club um let's see he says uh we also recognize when guys that want to do their own thing um and that they have different styles and they try to accommodate uh that when the road allows for it so uh, and they have they've made a decision that when they split off at least two go oh yeah good yeah i caught that in the email so if you got a couple guys that want to really rip it through the twisties if they take off, you got to have two. Got to have two. Got to have buddy. That's awesome. It's a good idea. I do. I mm-hmm. think that's a cool idea. Um, and that that's regardless. Uh, any biker club, law enforcement, civilian, firefighter, I think that's just a good idea to hang out in pairs because yeah. you never know. Guy goes down um, or a guy has, you know, bike problems. Whatever your reasons for that, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. What say you? I agree. It's good to have a sweeper too to come through and make sure everybody's, nobody's on the side of the road. Very, yep, very good point. Um, they used to, oh, what did he, what do you say here? 
oh, they used to be against it for safety and logistic reasons of breaking off. Right. They wanted uh, to stay together as a pack and they wouldn't split off. They recently uh, agreed that they would let it happen as long as two at a time went. Cool. So they've kind of changed that thinking, it looks like. And all in I, all... I don't know what he means by breaking off. I mean, taking off ahead of the group or going somewhere different. Right. We don't... You know, when we ride, we may at times um, split up the group a little bit, but we're, but we're still all going the same direction. You know what I mean? So I'm not sure what, what he means. Right. Like. And I don't... I'm looking here. It doesn't really specifically yeah. state it. But um, so he'd said I, I, he'd appreciate our insight as to um, insight as you are a traditional motorcycle club referring to us. Yeah. And, and from sounds of it, you seem to be making it work. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much. Thank you, Todd, for taking the time to send that email and give us a, a good topic. So let's go with that. Um, Matt, what, what say you? on this deal we've got a i guess we could talk about a whole bunch of stuff um i'll give you my quick uh response um oh we, actually i'm not going to give that response because it's kind of just a uh yeah thanks for sending it and stay tuned and we're going to do a podcast on it so um let me go to our next uh show notes here so let's talk about i'm actually going to make a permalink for this episode yep um and what is that going to be real it's going to be www for oh, that's for Rob. Oh, that's for Rob. Here we go. Worldwideweb.lawabidingbiker.com forward slash club riding. There you go. All one word club riding. Because I think that we've had this email actually more uh, uh, recently and, mm-hmm. and from more people than Todd. Todd just wrote it really good on what he was looking for. So we will refer people back to this episode. Um, yeah. Let's look at this. Uh, uh, I guess let me start it out. Okay, and you can roll with that. We are pretty traditional yep. within the Sworn FUMC. So we're looking um, at, um, you know, and if you guys don't know what traditional is, because some of our listeners may not, and this has nothing to do with law enforcement club. As in, This is how any, um, and even um, outlaw, you know, it just any, kind club. Of, any club, it's just kind of, uh, um, kind of the standard. So if you don't know, we're going to break it down for you here. Um, typically the president, leads the pack and he rides up front and he rides near the center line left side left side right uh or the skip line depending on if you're on a four-way whatever but you're li- there you go I, I let's use left side uh straight to his right side is vp uh no road captain should be a road if you sorry, have sorry we do change it it should be we vp yeah because for our club a lot of times it's the vp or the road captain right Captains, and sorry. and sometimes we don't have the road captain with us so you oftentimes ride to my right side. Um, so that's typically how it's set up is president left, road captain right up front. Um, what next? What do we got? And then you have you, all your officers usually that follow in behind. Which are your full color wearing members, full patched members. Right. Full members and, and chapter officers. Yep. So we kind of just including the VP, secretary, treasure, and then all your full patched members. Um, and typically... Uh, at the very back of the pack, uh, to the right, tailing the pack is your sergeant at arms, mm-hmm. and uh, he kind of brings up the rear, and and then after that, he's in the rear with the gear. Oh, and that is the one and only Chewy. Yes, which <laughs> yes, which we uh, uh, definitely heard from the old Chewy. And that's what he does if we uh, uh, fall apart and we aren't riding tight enough, and we can hear him from the back. <laughs> he just yells at us, gives us the chewy yell. Tighten yeah. it up, tighten it up. Um, and then what What do we have after all the full patch members? Then we'll have uh, prospective members, and then behind that, the hangarounds. Yep. That is very typical. When and we're being formal. When we're being formal, and that's the key. Um, and there's times that we're formal, and that's part of, I think, kind of what Todd wants to know about. So I am going to put this in the show notes. I actually have a diagram here. It's not my diagram. It is a diagram I found online, um, and it's all over. It's a typical diagram uh, formation and light up. Uh, excuse me, formation and lineup during a run. So, if you want to see that, uh, go to the episode. Okay, let's break this down a little bit. Now that we're done with that, um, I guess we are unique. And he talks a little bit, and that's what I made a note here. He talks about weak riders you know, and, and giving that encouragement, what say you about having club, club members that are weak riders? 
what because we have for? processes in place yeah. to not have weak riders. No, and we've I, talked about this a no, little bit. So no, they had to meet a certain skill level. Um, even with that, even with that said, some are a little bit better than others. But they have to meet right. a minimum set of skills uh, before they can even become full members. And we it's talk about the, that in length process. on our lawabidingbiker.com forward slash chapter request episode. Yep. Um, uh, so that episode thirty three. Yeah, it, it might. It, it Yeah, it is yeah. actually good memory. Yeah. Good memory. Um, it is episode 33. So you can either go to lawabindingbarker.com forward slash 33 or forward slash chapter request to take you to the same place. We, um, uh, we, but on iTunes, yeah, on iTunes or Stitcher, go to 33. The, and it's not just, you know, high speed riding. It's a low speed. The low speed is actually when you can look the worst. So Yes, we I see to, some bad stuff. Why don't you be able to come to a stop without putting out the duck feet and coming to a landing? You should be able to just put your left foot down. Right. Or not any feet it down until you're actually stopped. Yes. You know, keep mm-hmm. your feet on your floorboards or your pegs. Um, so I guess where I'm going with that a little bit, and maybe you'll uh, key off this, Matt. Um, I guess my deal is the, they've if we wouldn't have a member that's a weak rider. No. Because our, I don't want to ride with people that are weak riders. And it doesn't mean that's not snobbish. That's not, um, you know, puffing our chest. Okay. We've had people that have come into our club that, that were, um, you know, less than they, they weren't, you know, falling down, but they needed a little bit of, um, boost. And that comes with the whole prospect period. Yeah. And you're not, so I would suggest Todd that, um, just my, our suggestion, um, again, we don't have to claim to know it all. Uh, whatsoever, but we do have some things in place that work. So I would be very careful about bringing members on until they meet a certain riding level. And if they can't meet that level, then they don't become a member like us. And that's what the, if you can't meet, if you can't ride with us and I have to feel safe and I'm not going to risk my life around you. Um, and that's okay. If you come in slow, we have, we'll take you through courses. We set up low speed drills. We'll do all kinds of stuff to get you to the level of, we're not just looking for you to come in and be like a a perfect writer. And we're not perfect writers. We're not claiming that whatsoever. Um, but, but we ride well, you know, we, we, we ride confident and we ride very close. We ride, we'll ride handle handlebar to handlebar at times. So, um, on some very twisty roads and that needs to be done a very meticulous way and, and with practice. So go ahead. And when we ride in uh, groups that, uh, aren't a hundred percent, all of us, you know, when we get into a, a group ride that happens a you know, Very time good or two point. during the year, we will keep our eye out for those people that uh, come to approach us and have a chat with us, and we'll watch them ride. And um, we a lot of times we can make our decision right there whether or not we think that uh, you know that they have a possibility of becoming members of our, our chapter. And then um, as they eventually get into their probationary status, that's when the real work begins. That's when we start working with them and um, teaching them and bringing them up to speed. Yeah, that brings up a good point because um, I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, we are very careful when we ride with other groups. Mm-hmm. We pretty much stay together. Yeah, we're either going to be in the front or the back. We're not going to get back. mixed up no. with because it's dangerous. No, we've been in the middle before and it doesn't work. No, and we're not going to split our club up to um, ride with guys we're not comfortable with, which we do have a ride coming up with that very particular large group. Yeah, And we're not talking bad about any of those guys. Um, no. It has nothing to do with just, we ride together and we ride a certain way and, and we want to maintain that. And it's part of our club is we want to re- maintain that professional look. We just ride different than most clubs. We are very tight. And, uh, yeah. and again, we've talked about in the past down to, you know, the way our cuts look and, and it's just a, a professional image we try to um, uh, portray. So, um, but yeah, it's not personal at all. So that's that, I guess that's how we handle that is we're going to ride in the front of the back, but we're staying together yeah. and we're not going to intermingle with people we haven't ridden with before. Right. So, and we've talked about our formal formation, but sometimes we get informal. Yes. Yes, very true. So let's talk about formal. Okay. Um, when we are formal, and what I mean by that is um, when we're going to an event, mm-hmm. this is when what we talked about the formation and how yep. the president ups up front. We're very strict on that when we're going to go into a large event, um, you know, uh, about maintaining those positions when we're going to go for a very short ride, when we're going to go to a very short rally, or when we get, we may ride across country and then get close to an event and we'll form up. Um, but so that, I guess those are the times that we are really a little bit more strict on 
how we ride and and who's where. Um, um, I, you got any thoughts on that? And then I'm going to move into. Uh, is there anything else on our formal? Formal? Well, yeah. well when we come into a, a, a parking lot or event or whatever, I mean, you're on the front left, you're in charge, and you will give us the uh, signal, the hand signal for a single file. So we'll move from our two abreast into single file, and the guy on the right collapses behind the guy on the left. So we fill in, and then you bring us in and park us. Right. We don't just come in and go all different directions and park all over the place. You bring us in, and you find a place that's adequate enough for all the bikes to park, and you park, and we all pull up next to you. Right. So very good. That that's a little bit extra that I wanted. That I I just, I, I uh, kind of went drew a blank there. But yes. So those are the times that we are uh, a strict on that. Now, our club, and we've it's well known in here at LawAbidingBiker dot com. Anybody who uh, is on the podcast or works or helps with this is a avid motorcycle rider, not a day rider, not a to the restaurant bar rider. And we have nothing against that. We just glad people are on motorcycles. That's just how we choose to do it. But we ride cross country. And that's a whole nether deal. That is where we lose the uh, uh, strictness about being the formality. the formality. When you're riding from here through Idaho, through Montana, you cannot Wyoming. expect, yeah, Wyoming, you cannot expect to stay in that, in that. It's just, it would get boring. Yeah. And you, sometimes it's nice to lead. Sometimes it's nice to be in the back and watch all the bikes work. And, you know, it's nice to have different scenery. Yes. And so that's where we really, uh, um, it's pretty much our, our formal stuff and, and, and close rides that we really form up and, and follow these protocols. So with that said, when we're going cross country, we really don't have a standard no. and I'm just going to throw that out Whoever there. Whoever wants to lead can lead. We'll all follow in. We're all, we still ride tight Oh yeah, and we still ride professional. It's just, okay. I may get bored up front and I'll motion you or, or Chewy or, you know, one of the North crew guys or whatever, um, big river guys. Hey, like today, um, I, we went to, uh, you went with us to lunch and we had some big river guys down and then you had to go home right. and, uh, before the podcast here. And I, uh, decided, uh, I let the P and VP of the big river, um, another chapter lead. I just told him go. I had ridden up front all day I w- and we were going to just ride up the canyon and we we're going to do it. Actually, we rode the freeway and, and we we're going to do some twisties and stuff. And I'm like, no, I want to be in the back for a while, you know? And it was, so it was just the three of us from there. But, you know, so I, I guess I don't get, I guess us, we don't get too formal unless it's those specific events. Other than that, we're going to ride sharp yep. and we were tight, even though I'm the president of the mother chapter, I still wanted the big river uh, Popeye to, to, to lead and, and the VP Sarge to lead. Um, and I'm fine with that. We, nobody else knows. No. And I don't care about that. The bottom line is I don't care what position I'm in or you're in. We're going to look sharp yep. because we all write. That's the, goes back to the key is not to let people in your club until they're at the writing level that you wanted them to be. And if they're not give them training, set up cone drills, set up low speed stuff, you know, and like Matt says, that's where people tend to look, look horrible. horrible that's yeah. where clubs is just like are you serious you come in looking good and then all of a sudden it just goes the, to the ducks boop. come out for a landing yeah 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 thank you yeah the ducks come in for a landing um it, it is good to practice and and you know riding the the higher speeds and handlebar to handlebar that's a whole deal too but that's much easier to learn than riding low speed right uh, guys low speed drills and 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 uh uh cranking your handlebars you know tank to tank uh you know to where your handlebars can't turn anymore and that kind of stuff is where guys just fumble all over themselves the gray area of the clutch is tough for yes a lot of people. which is key to uh making those really tight parking lot turns mm-hmm. and, and handlebar to you know tank you and got drag, it dragging your rear brake yep. when you need it it's all about yeah. braking and gray area and and uh so you really have to practice that stuff and and practice as a club um so when we are on cross country rides, I will get a little further into this. Um, it, I mean, when you're riding for seven days, like we're going to go down um, this year, and uh, oh, yeah, that's right, Cali baby. We're, we're going gonna, Oregon, and then we're going to go Cali. Uh, we hit a little bit of Nevada, or we're going back up into Oregon. Uh, no, we hit a little bit of Nevada. I think yep. we do, don't we? I just just on ride planner. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to get wet when we ride down the Oregon coast. I guarantee you. 
never fails. Never fails. Never fails. Mm-hmm. So like on a trip like that and like last year, um, when we are on a seven-day trip, there's no way I'm leading the whole time. There's no way I'm being in back the whole time. So when we are on those type of trips, we pretty much just mix it up. We really don't care. We don't talk about it in the morning. It's just, you know what? We all ride the same and whatever position we're in, uh, we're going to look sharp. And, and as we're going, you know, when we're riding a, f- you know, what are some of our bigger days? I mean, you're talking about riding seven hour days. Yeah. Um, I saw some of them on there. Yeah. <laughs> There's a seven oh, yeah. hour day. So, um, we four or 50, 500 miles a day. Right. And so on those long days, we're like, uh, I, I don't know the, the term for it, but we're bumping back and forth. So, um, I'll be leading for a while and then I'll get tired and drop back and Matt will pass me and LD may lead for a while. And then all of a sudden, um, from the back of the pack, Chewy so, passes me. ADD kicks in. And somebody's, yeah, yeah, no, dude, that's nah, totally, no big deal. Yeah. You know who that is, dude. Um, who's, eba, 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 eba. yeah, dudes, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That would be simple. There you go. Straight for LD. Dude, he does. He starts twitching. Oh, yeah. You can see him just bouncing around on top of his bike. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he just tweaking. passes you. And then he's like, he's probably like, uh, eventually like a uh, half mile ahead of us. And just, and sometimes that's okay as a club. In the we, middle of nowhere. We're yeah, okay with that. We're, yeah. We're in the middle of nowhere. And sometimes you just want to ride alone for a little bit where you just want to take in the scenery and you don't want to have to worry about the handlebar next to you you know and i need that on seven day trips sometimes i fall back oh yeah it's at the very back and i just ride single Mm -hmm. you know um instead of two abreast or um i'll just ride single for a little bit and just breathe in the air and take in the scenery and and uh so i guess that's probably we probably beat a, a a dead horse here but do you have anything to throw on that before we get into you can lead a horse water but you can't make him drink I don't even know what that means. I mean, I guess it does, but I don't know that it pertains to this. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty so much. So our riding style depends. Right. That would be a good way to uh, sum it up. Um, but I do encourage you to look sharp. I do encourage you to ride together. I do encourage you to, to, to you know, prospect those guys and, and make sure they can ride right. Because the bottom line is, you don't want to ride with people that don't know how to ride. It puts you in jeopardy. It looks sloppy. And most guys can be trained. They really can. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it just takes the right people. And use your resources. And Todd here is is with law enforcement. So he's got motors resources and yep. and like us, you know, and, and just just find the people that are knowledgeable and know how to ride. Yeah, if you got a motors guy that's willing to come out on his off time and show you a thing or two and you guys aren't afraid to – Maybe tip your bike over. You can learn a few things. Right, exactly. And uh, you can do that with, uh, um, boy, are we getting way, but that that's okay because we can uh, we can do hand signals another episode. That's okay. not a huge deal if we have to. I'm just going to look at where we're at. Yeah, we're about ready to wrap it up. Um, I don't want to go too much longer than this. So there you go, guys. Um, yeah, and you oh, real quick, I want to say during those training events, you can put like a uh, hose, cut, garden hose, garden hose around your crash bars, and take your saddlebags off. Put uh, hose right. around your, and it's so low speed. If you drop it, it's probably going to be because you're not giving enough gas, and it just goes and on. You're going to kill the motor. It's just going to fall inside. You're probably not going to hurt anything. Right, and the crash bar will catch it. It'll and, catch it, and if, and the worst you can do is scratch your uh, crash bar. But if you got a rubber hose zip tied around it, it won't even do that. So, right, don't be afraid. Yep, give it a try. We were uh, going to get into um, hand signals, guys, but we are out of time. So I apologize for that. We will have to do that a next episode. Um, <laughs> Lurch is giving me a hand signal right now, but it is not an appropriate motorcycle hand signal. Um, You're number one, brother. Yeah. Why don't you uh, real quick um, uh, go uh, give some uh, props to, we had a couple donations yeah. and then we'll close this episode out with, okay. uh, there is one more thing after the donations, but go ahead. Yeah. We'd like to thank a couple people for uh, giving donations to the law abiding biker podcast, helping support this beast and keep it moving. So where the free videos come from guys and the free podcast, uh, Scott Ladd of spring lakes, Michigan. Thank you, Scott. He is, uh, what is, Oh, no, there's, is that just a company? That yeah, a company on? that donated. Okay. There's another company that donated. It's probably an individual through that company. But it was Dana Pros, D-A-N-A-P-R-O-S, Consulting in you know, San Jose, California. Thank you to the people at Dana Pros Consulting. Jose Cali, we will be uh, close to there. So 
awesome. Thanks for those donation guys. That is how um, we're going to keep progressing here at law abiding biker media is, is the donations. And so we can, um, you know, till we get some sponsorship and stuff, uh, keep this thing going for you guys. So, all right. Do you have anything, any closing words, any words of wisdom lurch? Hmm. I hope this episode was informational. Ooh, I hope it was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was infotaining. Uh, if you love it, lube it. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> those are some good... Which gets us into another episode. Later. Parting thoughts. Yes, it does. Thanks, guys, so much for tuning in. I'm sorry if we went just a little bit long. We forgot to set the timer, but I think I know about where we're at. Anyways, don't forget Lab Podcast Hotline to leave a voicemail. 509-731-3548 or leave an internet internet voicemail at lawbindingbiker.com forward slash voicemail or voice message email or voicemail at lawbindingbiker.com forward slash contact don't forget to get into the law abiding biker email club as lurch stated it's free it's free it's spam free lawbindingbiker.com forward slash email club so you can get everything first and that's how we roll uh, anyways, rate us on iTunes. We appreciate We're going to go over some of the ratings and uh, some of the comments. And thank you so much. And Stitcher, we're kicking butt on Stitcher. Thanks for all the comments. We'll even read the four-page uh, ones that aren't so good. That's true. <laughs> no, we will not. We will not. Well, um, we read it. We may not read it on the radio, but we'll read it and we'll consider it. I actually brought it up, uh, and you probably forgot, but the last episode oh. that aired in our anniversary episode, I okay. talked about it briefly, yeah. but you forgot. Well, that happens. It does. It See does. the gray hair on my head? Well, I got plenty myself. So anyways, guys, thank you so much. Appreciate it. God bless. We appreciate all the bikeaholics out there. We're out. Like a trout. Keep the rubber side down. And the shiny side up.